Good evening, good evening, good evening. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> so, I have as my guest tonight, uh, yes, I am James. And, um, uh, and in, as I said before, in the spirit of uh, good old-fashioned circle joking, I will now be interviewing him. I've categorised everything the way uh, Watch Rosazel does, because it's fun to categorise things. I found it quite uh, easy um, to, uh, to do that with, with the questions, uh, the kinds of questions that, um, but yes, I am James. Got so, are you ready? Uh, I'm ready, but before I start there, I'd just like to say that uh, me and Alex considering making this um, a semi-regular thing, perhaps once every couple of weeks, and having uh, a few guests on. So, uh, if you're interested in that, let us know in the comments section, and uh, we can chat. Yay! Okie dokie then. So, um, the first category are joke questions. Um, the first is, why do I have difficulty coming up with questions to ask? Um, because... You're an idiot? Is, I'm going to... I don't know! <laughs> it's like you who asked that question. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm guessing it must have been Tracy then by how shocked you were. <laughs> I'm sure you can, you can uh, make it out to her later. Yeah, I hate doing these things live because I never have a witty answer. So. <laughs> be like sitting there for five minutes trying to think of something witty. So first thing which came to my head... You're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'm an idiot too, so it's all good. We're all Sorry, there. Tracy. <laughs> <laughs> um, of all the women who have made you sandwiches, who makes the best? That would be Miss Hannah Minx. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, what, what, what kind of sandwiches are they? Are they kind of like... Uh, oh, that was absolutely... That was, it had two types of cheese. One of them was um, like a herby cheese. The other one was... Oh, I can't remember what it was now. It had bacon, some mushroom, and egg. Uh-huh. I always think the most important thing about a sandwich is that you cut them diagonally. I honestly think they taste better if they're cut diagonally. Maybe. I'm sure that's placebo. <laughs> <laughs> I just have them whole and just shove the whole thing in my mouth. Oh. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, that, that was uh, that was in... Re um, yeah, that Miss Animates thing is in reference to uh, one of my latest videos where I... Jokingly said that she made me a sandwich. Don't oh right, okay. She hasn't. I haven't actually visited her. Oh right. Oh, I see. So you, you just had to make that thing up. I think there's a there's a sandwich recipe I know. I'm gonna have to look up. It's got red onion and Lincolnshire Lincolnshire sausages and some kind of is it like an onion marmalade? It's very nice. We have onion marmalade in the UK, by the way. Um, I, yeah, wait, I've had it. I've had it before. Uh, yeah, it's, it's gorgeous. Yeah, well, for the audience, you may not know, because um, we actually have, um, in my area, we have bacon jam. Bacon jam? Yep. Yeah, it's very specific to my particular area of London. Well, I'm not surprised. <laughs> oh, you, you, you think it won't pull the tourists? <laughs> <laughs> no, the tourist pull, I don't think. <laughs> Ah, oh, but, um, mm, right, okay. The next one is slightly oddly written. Uh, you like being British in it. I think it's only a question because it ends in in it. I think, yeah, you, 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 you like being British. Okay, I'm going to guess that was from Gunderson. <laughs> um, am I supposed to tell you if you guessed? Because I already did once. Um, yeah. And that's not Why that not? Uh, there, are, there are quite a few uh, Gunderson questions, but not yeah. that one. Um, okay, yeah, and it's only if I guess first time, I think. Um, oh, okay. you know, well, I'm, we just make up the rules as we go along, aren't we? And I suppose the answer is yes, I like being British because I can speak properly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm, sorry, I'm, yeah. I'm going to be apologising so much during this. Well, actually, no, I'm not. Um, uh, this is the joke section, by the way, so if I say something like that, <laughs> you know, for the audience, you might get the... Nick is in a twist. Uh, <laughs> you know, that's... <laughs> you know, that's called a joke. So, yes, yeah. exactly. We're, 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 it's, it's, all, it's all in good fun. I'm going to translate the next question from that user as... Um, this, is, this actually makes me think of something from um, the sitcom Space. Um, 
basically, do you have any phobias of like animals or insects? And no. part two of, no, oh right, nothing. So, because like, part two of that question is, is it your biggest fear that those two, like if you were scared of snakes or scared of spiders, or no, both? It would your biggest fear be that they would combine to breed into like a, a an evil super race that would overthrow humanity? That would be awesome. <laughs> that would just be awesome. So no, no, not a big fear. <laughs> not a fear, more of a hope. You're probably going to go and breed them in your laboratory now. Um, <laughs> Or, or not, not really gene splice. Yes, a, 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 yeah, a snake with legs on its own, even before it's an evil super race. It's quite mm. a nifty idea. Well, um, snakes do actually have the genes which encode for legs. It's just usually those genes are deformed, so they never end up developing. Uh, just like humans, can, on, on occasions, can be born with tails, and whale, uh, whales can be born with legs, chickens can be born with teeth. And, you know, that's one of the one of the things which proves evolution. You only ever well, see those traits emerge in a creature yeah. where its ancestors had those traits. We You'd never see, uh, for example, a pig with wings or anything like that, because at no point mm-hmm. during its history did pigs ever have wings. Um, whereas on the creationism model, there is no reason to believe that something like that is impossible so if you if creationists can find a centaur or a unicorn well not maybe not a unicorn but if they can find a centaur or a griffin or anything like that Mm -hmm. then well done you've just disproved evolution but wow yeah and pigs will fly but they won't (laughs) <laughs> it's just the accuracy of that expression <laughs> like that's oh the day that happens is the day pigs will fly it's, well, yeah. so we now we now know how how appropriate and accurate that that phrase exactly is. um is anyone sexier than gunderson um only about six billion people <gasps> so he's still sexier than one billion people Oh yeah, maybe. Do you want to hazard a guess as to who who asked who, who asked that question? Could that have been Gunderson? <laughs> I suspect you're correct. Ah, oh, the, the next question, and obviously I can't tell you who asked this. <laughs> the next Gunderson. question. The next one yeah. is: um, Will uh, Will you fuck me? Um. I'm a little bit more picky than Alex, so purely based on probability, <laughs> I'm going to say no. Ah, uh, okay. Do, do you want to guess who asked that? It's a very unfair question without knowing who asked really, isn't it? <laughs> I'm going to guess they're male. They are male, yes. Yes. Okay, that's a good enough guess. Um, uh, um, right, I've put this on the joke question but I'm not entirely sure I, I, there might be a reference I don't get are you a vulture or an anteater how does this affect your stance on intactivism I don't, know, I don't know if intactivism is a misspelling I, don't, I think maybe it's meant to be inactivism Ta- but. Um, intactivist I'm, ge- um, I'm going to guess since it's about intactivism that's going to be Watcher Azazel who asked that aha uh-huh. Um, but yeah, intactivists are the people who think that you know pe- uh, uh, circumcision is wrong. You know. Right. Um, oh, right. Okay. Yeah. That, um, yeah, it's quite a good word. Oh. I I don't know. Uh, I can't think of a witty, a witty answer for that question. Um, <laughs> there may be some something to do with vultures and anteaters and their penises, but I have, no, I have no idea, so... Right. I'll probably, at the end of the interview, I'll probably come back with some really witty one-liner, and you'll be, what the fuck, I'll go, that's the uh, anteater thing. Okay, I'll right. only, only an hour too late, uh, yeah, maybe I can edit that back. <laughs> ah. ah, right, now we have a very tricky one. This will require some thought. Mm-hmm. You are on a combi bomb with two blickles, one of which is fiddlewaggled. You only have enough flumshinkle to ectospamble one of them. Which blickle do you ectospambleize and why? I would ecto 
Splendorize the one which looks like Gunderson. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, right, that's interesting. Okay, I'll warn Gunderson that you want to echo spamble him. So, um, do you want to guess who asked that question? Hmm. <laughs> Was it Gunderson? No, I, I, I would assume that anybody... Would 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 immediately know that that was me. <laughs> okay, I didn't, I didn't. I wasn't aware that you uh, wrote uh, you put questions for him. So. Oh yes, I did. I thought I assumed I, that I would have. Yeah, otherwise, yeah. I'd straight away. <laughs> <laughs> ah, right. Final joke question. Why do they call someone late if they died early? Because. Saying they're late doesn't refer to their... Uh, saying they're late just refers to them being dead. It doesn't refer to them to when they died. So I guess that's it. I'm sure there's got to be a punchline to a punchline to that, but like I guess I'm not quick-witted enough at the moment. Late as in the late, late Arthur Dent. Um... Some people may get the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy reference there. So it's Marty yeah. Bart Bar- trying to make a joke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, okay, that, um, that brings us to the end of joke questions. Okay, that wasn't as traumatising as I thought it was going to be. Um, <laughs> you know, as I said in the, I think I mentioned in the previous interview, I hate doing these kind of things live. Yeah. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Okay, the first science question is that this is quite a simple, basic one, and there won't be any controversy about this. Uh, what do you think created the universe? I don't know. Nobody knows! Nobody knows! But it's not the yeah. God of the Bible, or any other theistic God. I'm pretty damn certain of that. What do you think of uh, the idea of a deist God, or...? Um... It's possible. It's certainly yet to be uh, proven. And I think for it to be worthy of the title God, it has to at least have um, have a motive for what it's doing. Um, yeah, for it to be a theistic God, it also has to be it also has to have will and be able to influence mm. things. I think that's uh, fair enough. A deist God, it. It certainly has to have a motive, and so you'd expect by looking at the universe there'd be some something in it which looks designed. You know, it would it would actually be quite fine tuned for life. Whereas you actually look at the universe, and most you know, the vast, vast, vast majority of it is completely inhospitable. Uh, you know, Earth, the only place, you know, is the only place we can have life in the solar system without some severe modification from us. Yeah. And, you know, that's such a tiny fraction of the overall mass. So, um, yeah, you know, we just, I, I don't see enough, I don't see the universe as being well enough designed, as it were, to... Uh, warrant believing that it was created by a creature with or an entity with any form of uh, will or purpose Hmm. I think Uh, that's about the best I can answer that really yeah it's one of those things where um, the universe just doesn't how could people insist that the universe looks Designed. I also will again cite Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy and say that we were sneezed. I forget the name of the creature, but we were the universe was sneezed out of a creature's nose, and it, it's purely it was an accident. As far as that creature's concerned, it's just you know. And, and of course, we must all live in fear of the coming of the Great White Handkerchief. Yeah. Um. Like if if a dog shits on if a dog shits in the middle of a, a field, uh, there might be loads of bacteria living in that shit. Um, to, to the back, if you were one of those bacteria and you had any form of consciousness, you may look at that shit and think it's really well designed and it was designed for you for a purpose. Yeah. But um, as far as the dog's concerned, he just gave a shit. You know, that's <laughs> all there is to it. <laughs> um, 
if the god did create the universe, he certainly doesn't care about us, and I don't think he meant to do it. Ah, uh, yeah, I could, I could go along with that. And uh, right, here's a good one. Have you uh, ever had ideas for an invention? For example, right now the wind is blowing desert sand through my win- window screens and there is fine powder covering everything inside where I don't want it to be. Why haven't men, in block capitals, why haven't men come up with a solution to fix this for me? So base, we'll just go with the, with the actual question, which is, um, have you ever had ideas for an invention? Uh, I constantly have ideas for inventions. I just never write them down and end up forgetting about them. So um, it's one thing I'm trying to do now more is uh, keep a notebook with me and write down ideas when they pop into my head. Yeah, that's that's what I'm like. Uh, yeah, keep it because you're going to have ideas in inconvenient places. So you need, you need a notepad in your toilet, you need a, not mm. in your toilet, in the bathroom, and by your bed. By you know, because yeah, you will have ideas in the worst possible times. I, I have ideas for inventions, but I don't. I, I, but only in the sense of why doesn't that exist? Or does that exist? That should exist. But yeah. I, I wouldn't be able to patent them because I wouldn't you, know how to do that. You don't even, you don't bother to follow it through and think and look, has someone actually made this um, sort of thing? I think I have done, but I can't think of any examples right now. As yeah. a kid, because I was a very fussy eater, of course, as a, as a kid, um, I was like, why isn't there something that exists solely to eliminate the flavour of something you tried and didn't like? I know you can sort of mm. spray mint in your mouth or just suck a mint or chew yeah. gum, but something that exists very, maybe a spray purely for that purpose, just, it just eliminates the, the flavour of the thing that made you go, Ugh. You know, there, um, this is on QI. There's actually a, uh, a pill with uh, some sort of plant extract or something which uh, eliminates, uh, which basically numbs your sour taste buds. So oh, if you if you ha- take that if you take that and then uh, bite into a lemon or a lime, it tastes really sweet, and you get you lose all of the uh, sourness from it. Oh wow! Yeah, apparently it's amazing. That. Apparently, lemons after those taste absolutely amazing. Wow! Oh, cool. There is of course yeah. a danger there, though, where you have those taste buds for a reason. So you shouldn't like drink a pint of vinegar, for example. Well, yeah. Um, this was where I caught, because I, I've seen Darren Brown live, and to demonstrate somebody being in a trance on stage, he gives, he has a pint of vinegar, and he gets the audio, an audience member to smell it, a few audience members to smell it, and agree that it's vinegar. And, the, and this girl drinks it, this girl, you know, quote-unquote from the audience, knocks back an entire pint of vinegar, and then she does loads of other things, because she's supposed to be hypnotised. And when you yeah. get to the... You're out of the trance now, and she's like on stage, like what? A blurry eyed. Why am I on stage? What's yeah. happening? Um, okay, she was in a trance when she drank the vinegar. That's how we know she was in a trance. The second that you're out of, you know, you're no longer under hypnosis, you would know from your stomach. You'd go, Ugh. Hmm. <laughs> you go, you'd be, you'd suddenly be ill. So yeah. I think I was like, yeah, that bit of the show was a bit fake. I think. Maybe, and I know uh, certain things which are apparently, you know, impossible unless you're in a trance, you can actually do. Um, someone was men- mentioned something about um, hypnotists making people eat uh, onions and think they're apples, and then they're like, well, hang on, have we tried eat? Uh, you know, let's actually try eating an onion when I know I'm not in a trance, and can I do it without grimacing too much and you know they could you know it's, mm. it's not pleasant yes. but you can do it um, in oh. some countries that's the traditional way you treat your own cold um, I had some Lithuanian guests and they thought absolutely nothing of peeling an onion and eating it like an apple that's what they do if they have a cold back to the invention so, thing uh, yeah yeah, my, uh, I either don't write the inventions down or the ideas I have would be so insanely expensive to yeah. produce. There just wouldn't be um, an economic market for selling those, uh, selling right. those products. I come up with a lot of ideas for, uh, for computer game technology and stuff. 
Okay. Um, I think some of them are some of them are pretty good, but some of them are insanely expensive. One problem you get with uh, the virtual reality is mm. what the fuck do you do about your legs? You know, you can have VR goggles on and some sort of gun in your hand and look around and all of that stuff, but um, you need to actually move with your legs, uh, you know, yeah. to make it actually feel realistic or yeah. lose some level of control in uh, either your fingers or one of your arms or something like that. Um, yeah. And I came up with an idea of, it was, it's like a lens-shaped thing facing, like, like an upside-down umbrella, that kind of shape, but more squashed, with lots of little balls on it, yeah. So, uh, which sense when they're being turned. So you, if you walk forward in, on it, you'll roll back to the centre and you should be able to run and stuff like that and sidestep and all of those kind of things. Um, yeah. But it would probably end up costing about 10 grand or something stupid and they're just... Wow. You know, the average gate, there they're just wouldn't be enough people willing to pay for it, for it to actually make... Uh, yeah make sense and be a profitable it, invention. Yeah. Well, I think it might come down in price over time because of filmmakers, like for Gollum, for the Avatar, for the Na'vi and Avatar. I mean, that that's basically what they do to create those characters and get the realistic motion, isn't it? So it's well, like... They, they, the motion capture suits and stuff, I mean, like, you've still got to work within a confined area or, you know, you've got... Or you have to have a massive studio in order to do it. Um, mm. And, yeah, I mean, you know, that's... That's the real problem until we can just jack ourselves into the matrix. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ah. Okay. Um, so, uh, in the future, I would advise don't forget if you're in conversation and an idea comes to you, get a friend that you trust to remember for you if you haven't got a pen. Yeah. Pen that remind you. Oh, you you said something about inventing, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Okay, now here's a very, very important um, science question, age-old science question. If the Wicked Witch of the West melts in water, how did she ever bathe? Well, lots of people historically uh, never bathed. Um, so maybe she just never bathed. Maybe that's why she's not so mean, because people <laughs> don't want to talk to her, and she's just lonely and misunderstood. I Does think so. Explain why the skin's all green and warts and all of that yeah. stuff. <laughs> um, yeah. I think that's a pretty good answer. I, I would say, yeah, she lives alone in a castle apart from a load of rat people who probably aren't as bothered by the stink. Yeah. Um, I, I can actually give an answer to the question, which is in the Wicked books, which the show is based on, it says that she washes in oil. Um there's another answer for the Wicked musical, but that would count as a spoiler. But I, I like your theory, too. Okay. Uh, uh, why do people constantly return to the refrigerator with hopes that something new to eat will have materialised? Uh, blind, blind faith and desperation. Yeah. So expecting manna from heaven, basically. Exactly, yes. Uh, if black is the absence of light, then what is the colour of transparency? If black is the absence of light, then... What is the colour of transparency? Well, transparency is the absence of colour. That's easy enough. Oh, OK, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> um, nice, simple answer. Um, how can it be determined that my experience of consciousness is the same as anyone else's experience of consciousness? Ooh. That's a good question. Um, I suppose the best we can do is uh, MRI machines, make sure that the same areas are uh, lighting up and all of that crap. Uh, perhaps in the future we'll be able we'll have technology where we can see down to the individual neuron and dendrite level. Um, <clears throat> but I think we'll definitely be able to get to the stage where we can say it's uh, 
Um, yeah, the um, consciousness is subjective, but very similar between different people, or perhaps very different. Ah. Oh. But, okay. yeah, um, I'm just bullshitting now, I don't know. <laughs> but, yeah, <laughs> that's about the best I can answer that question. It's better than I could have uh, managed at all, because I think um, I would just have said, I don't think, I don't know, and I don't think you can be totally mm. sure, but... And, you know, we can certainly, um, we might be able to do more uh, experiments with uh, animals and see how consciousness varies between different species. Like, I think uh, Daw- um, yeah, Dawkins suggested that it may be, pop- it, uh, that bats may perceive different textures oh. in a very similar way that to uh, us, uh, us seeing different colours, uh, for example. Yeah. We might be able to see with MRI scans that yes, that's exactly what's go. Um, that's exactly what's going on. Um, and then, of course, you've got synesthesia, where people uh, perceive uh, perceive one sense as another, or perceive one sense mm. in two different, two or more different ways. So yeah. Okay. Next science question is. What in sci-fi that is not yet discovered or invented, but theoretically possible, that you would like to come true? Example, you can't have sonic screwdriver as they do now exist, but something having a greater surface area within than without, like the TARDIS, is only possible in theoretical physics and could have uses. Um, Any gadget, any process or experiment you want, but has to be something as yet only the dream of a sci-fi writer you think useful or would benefit mankind. Pick a few if you wish. Okay, first thing, uh, they meant uh, larger inside volume, uh, um, not surface area. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, I had to nitpick that, maybe. Uh, I, yeah, TARDIS, that would be excellent, of course. Um, let's see. Uh, certainly, uh, communic- uh Having new t- neutrino uh, neutrino communication that would just be awesome because then uh, you don't have to bounce the signal up to was it forty thousand miles and then uh, to a satellite and then down to something on Earth and back to another satellite and back down to someone else and then get the signal back again. You know, um, having light travel you know up to a hundred thousand um, you know hundred two hundred thousand um, kilometers. Um, you know, you can have it. You could be able to have a signal sent straight through the centre of the Earth, making wow. communication much, much faster. So, for playing oh. games, that would be amazing. I'm sure there's far more serious purposes for it as well, which could be useful. Um, the Matrix, uh, but without the whole kind of <laughs> robots controlling everything, mm. be brilliant. Uh, <clears throat> I mentioned the TARDIS, didn't I? Yes. Yes. Um, um, the, the thing? Yeah. Interplanetary, uh, uh, you know, tra- uh, travelling, mm. uh, terraforming. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, you know what terraforming is. Yep. <laughs> yeah, cool. Um, <laughs> ho- hopefully the rest of the audience knows as well. Oh, there's, hun- you know, there's hundreds or thousands of things in sci-fi which would just be amazing to have in reality. I mean, you know, that's the whole point of the genre, really. Actually, I have sort of thought about terraforming that had never occurred to me before, mm. uh, which is uh, you could do everything except getting that planet into the Goldilocks position. So would you need some other thing to do to actually... Or would terraforming include affecting the, the weight, gravity, density, volume, whatever, of that planet? Mm. Um, <laughs> I mean, there's a there's a few ways you could do it. Um, I mean, yeah, if you want to just go for the sheer brute force method, you could pr- you probably could push a planet into into orbit, but you'd need something insanely powerful, more than we're capable of, uh, more than we'll be capable of doing for the next few hundred years, probably. Um, you could just yeah. have you could have a thicker atmosphere which traps more heat in then you could have uh, millions of mirrors orbiting the planet which uh, turn towards it and focus the light onto it, making it making it warmer. Um, 
you could set off some sort of thermonuclear explosion in the core, which produces an insane amount of heat, maybe massive antimatter bomb, although that may end up destroying the planet, but <laughs> it might work. Hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, there's loads of ways you could do it, or just maybe big, big fucking biodomes, which are... Uh, which are heated or cooled to the right amount, and the outside of the planet is still completely... The outside of those domes is still completely inhos- um, inhospitable. You know, there's there's quite a few ways of doing it. Oh, OK. Uh, could, could we actually make an artificial moon which would function as our moon functions for the Earth? Um, for gravity... Uh, unless we find some way of creating vast amounts of artificial gravity, then the only way to do it would be to have something the same weight as the moon, which oh. uh, which would be ridiculous. So, right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's not easy being a god. <laughs> no. Um, Okie dokie, that was a, a, a good... Uh, oh, and um, that brings us to the end um, of science questions. Um, yeah, so that just page pay- one of science questions. Sorry? That was just page one of science questions, wasn't it? Um, uh, no, I must have gone down both... Oh, I was... Oh, right. Sorry, there was only one page of science questions, and we've got two pages of ethics and politics. Um, so do you want to carry on? Because we're only, we're only four minutes in. Uh, yeah, let's do it. We're five and a half minutes in. Yeah. Oh, we are? Oh, OK. Right. Uh, OK, so now we have ethics and politics. Ah, so, do you, do you, uh, uh, no prizes for guessing who asked this, do you think there are any men's rights issues more important than circumcision? That was what you were Yep. <laughs> uh, I think, yeah, I, I do think circumcision is a pretty big one, you know, that, you know, the gentle mutilation of over a billion people, pretty important, yeah. um... <laughs> Uh, but yeah, bigger than circumcision. Um, hmm. uh, well, false rape allegations certainly have sort of <laughs> devastating effect. Uh-huh. Uh, although I don't know how what that is in terms of numbers. I mean, if you uh, the you know damage times number of people affected and compare that to circumcision, probably substantially less. Um, that's about all I can. Th- that's about all I can think of uh, at the moment. But I mean, you know, that is uh, it is quite subjective. Okay. Well, there are more questions to do with uh, men's rights later, so I think we'll probably touch upon uh, some of those issues with. Uh, yeah, later. and I'll probably bring something up later as well. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, is Jesus an ethical standard that humanity can set for itself without the miracles? So I think, in other words, if none of the paranormal claims in the Bible are true, is following the moral teaching of Jesus still a good idea? I think is the, the basic gist of that. Um, yeah, uh, certainly, but just, you know, don't take everything for gospel. If he <laughs> says something which seems a bit... Uh, if, if, if there's anything he says which seems a bit ethically bankrupt, ignore those parts, you know? I think people may you not need to follow me. You don't need to follow anybody. <laughs> we are all individuals. Uh, but yeah, quite. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so if, so, if what someone teaches is a good idea, then it doesn't matter if they walked on water. But I would say this came up recently. Because um, I, I said that I like the book of Matthew and always have, and there aren't any crazy bits. And then the person I was, as it was Gunderson, listed all the crazy, stupid bits in the book of Matthew, which I wasn't aware of. Yeah. But there's th- stuff in there, it came up recently, um, you know, do not uh, announce your acts of righteousness um, with trumpets, as the, as the hypocrites do. And actually, you think of the number of people probably who do call themselves Christians, who, like, let them, they, 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 uh, you know, they donate money to a hospital and there's a ward named after them. Um, look at me handing over this massive check to charity. I'm a good person. Vote for me. All the uh, announcing with... But, I mean, were there really people going around announcing with trumpets? Is he literal? Like, the, the hypocrites used to go, like, look at me. I'm giving money to charity. I'm a good person. <laughs> Maybe. Um, I'm going to guess boss man for that question. 
Uh, yes, it was. Yeah. Um, yes. He's asked a few. Um, I, I say that. Uh, yeah. What do you think of marriage? If there were another socially acceptable arrangement people could make for the purpose of raising children, would people choose it? Um, not a huge fan of marriage, personally, but I think it should be the individual person's choice. Also, I don't think that married people should have special treatment by uh, by government. They shouldn't get tax breaks or... Uh, special uh, privileges and all of that kind of stuff. Um, uh, Because, you know, as far as I'm concerned, that's basically social engineering. That's the government basically rewarding people for behaving in the way that they want to do it. Um, So, yeah, even including uh, gay marriage, you know, what about people who just... Uh, what about people who just don't want to get married? What about people who are in polygamous relationships? What about people who just want to stay single? Um, yeah. Yeah. So, um, okay. yeah, I mean, that's that's my view. I mean, it, if you want to get married, um, you know, that's your choice. But I don't think the government should be, uh, should have any involvement in it whatsoever except recognising these people are married. That's it. Yeah. Um, I, I also would say this question, the way the question is phrased implies that there is as if there were, so it's like it implies that there isn't another quote-unquote socially acceptable arrangement um, for, for raising children, when you sort of think, what are, the, what, are, what are these unacceptable arrangements for raising children, if they're, if it's, either it's safe and ethical and responsible and loving, or it isn't, so, yeah. and it could be, could be a married couple and be horrible <laughs> mm. Um but... Uh, Ah, why do so many people assume feminists are lesbians, but rarely do people think MRAs are gay? Um, I'd say probably um, it might be because the uh, other negative stereotype of MRAs conflicts with that quite heavily. You know, there's people who think that the MRAs are just this bunch of uh, traditionalists who want women back in the kitchen and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, if they're associating that with the uh, MRM, then they may also assume that we're all right-wing homophobes as well. So, mm. oh, right. yeah. yeah. And I think there's yeah. people who assume that people are in, um, that uh, people are MRAs because they can't get laid and shit, which is yeah, uh, bullshit. I think, yeah. yeah but I think male feminists in general, probably tend to have a harder time getting laid than MREs. <laughs> ah, okay. Um, if you saved someone's life and later they killed six people, are you responsible for those six deaths? Why or why not? Um, if you have... Uh, no, no, you're not, you're not responsible. You know, unless there was some way that you were to know that they were going to uh, kill six people immediately after and be reasonably sure of it. Uh, no, uh, you're not uh, You're not responsible. You can't be held accountable for something which uh, you have no way of knowing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You can't. You, you still ultimately you did the right thing. It happened in yeah. Star Trek, actually, but they... So someone saves someone's life, they're going to be, you know, and then later on they, they, they are that planet's equivalent of Hitler. But ultimately, you instinctively leap in front of the car to save that person's life because they're a human life, and you don't know they're the next Hitler, so... Exactly, yeah. I mean, you may feel a bit guilty about it, but, you know, still, you know, it's not your fault. Yeah. Um, okay, I think there's time for one more question in this segment. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, unfortunately, the question is, what would it take for you to be free of this MRA nonsense? Uh, for men to actually have decent rights? Nice, succinct answer. Okay. <laughs> uh, who... Ooh, who was that from? Oh, Cases and materials? Uh, no, actually. I don't think he asked the question. Um, I think so. but, uh, I'll tell you if you... Well, I'll, so I'll tell you later. Um, no, um, I, I guessed 
I'm not allowed to know. I got, okay. I got it wrong. I'm not allowed to know now. Okay. Okay, so continuing with ethics and politics, is there any way that us in the developed world can continue to live relatively secure lives without exploiting the rest of the world in the process? Um, that is a good question. Um, mm. The optimist in me would really like to say yes, and I am siding with the optimist side of, side of me at the moment. Um, it's just a matter of solving certain problems we have, such as producing enough power, which we could uh, do once we uh, suss fusion, um, producing enough food, um, clean water, all of those things. You know, if we can find, if science can get us the solutions to those problems, then yes, I think you know certainly for the foreseeable future, we're we're still going to have problems with uh, poverty, but we could eventually move away from exploiting Africa. I mean, it is a problem at the moment, um, <clears throat> part of me thinks that slavery never went away. It was just shifted out of sight. Uh, yeah. Like the way the American prison system works, you know, with, uh, you know, there's uh, the conviction rate for African Americans is insanely high. Uh, and they get them to work, uh, they get them to work in there and all of, and that kind of thing. I mean, that's basically slavery as it is. And as for, uh, yeah, as for Africa and uh, some of the poorer parts of Asia, you know, we're now getting them to do labour very, very cheaply for us, manufacturing products we want and getting them imported. So, uh, in a way, we ne slavery never really went away. Uh, I, I think it certainly improved, but um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think I think eventually we will be able to get to the stage where we're not exploiting the rest of the world, but it's going to take time. Yeah. Okay, good answer. Um, was American intervention in Vietnam justified considering pardon me, the, Viet, the Viet Cong and the North Vietnamese government aggressor, or was it wrong considering the South? similar level of tyranny? Hmm. I honestly haven't researched it enough uh, to say for definite that yes, it was completely 100% justified, but um, from the very little I do know, um, it does seem like something had to be done, but I could be completely wrong. Right, okay. George because my little knowledge I do right. know comes from very patriotic American films. <laughs> there is right. a chance yeah. I could be wrong. Mm. Um, the last two questions were from the same user. Um, do you want to guess who asked those? Not yet. Okay, right. Here's a long one. Male rape is considered acceptable in comedy. Example, a peep show episode shows a man being forced by a woman. Get him to the Greek, features male rape as a joke and the victim is fine for two days. Uh, when in Doctor Who, there was a comedy scene where Amy wouldn't take no for an answer and the Doctor uh, had to fight her off, having said no repeatedly. The complaint was that Amy was being slutty and <coughs> a bad uh, role model. Uh, and she is mainly criticised by feminists for wearing short skirts. No means no was totally ignored. Thoughts? Question mark. Um, yeah, uh, completely. Uh, when it comes to uh, the subject of male rape, it's you know, male victims of rape. It's not taken seriously at all. Uh, another thing feminists bring up quite a bit: uh, 1991 uh, marital rape was made illegal. Uh, feminists uh, will say, you know, this is this is terrible. Men could rape their wives for, uh, you know, uh, could rape their wives just over twenty years ago. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, presumably it was still it was legal for wives to rape their husbands at that point. And right. I believe it was nineteen ninety three. The UN uh, had 
some form of violence against women act. It wasn't called the Violence uh, Against Women Act. Yeah, that's the American thing, but it was something very similar. And it was made a violation of human rights for a woman to be uh, maritally raped and mm. gen- or genitally mutilated, among other things. Right. Not a human rights violation when a man's being raped or for a man to be genitally mutilated, even now. Right. Um, but yeah, there's plenty of ways that men can be raped and it's just considered funny, uh, by lots of people. Uh, uh, you know, women can, uh, and even on the Young Turks, there's been plenty of events where, uh, you know, a teacher in their thirties has seduced, uh, a boy in his sort of mid, um, mid teens and people are just like, oh yeah, l- luckiest guy on earth and that kind of thing. There's a guy who was mm. uh, drugged and then fingered till he bled by a woman, and they thought that was funny as well. Um, but yeah, no, I don't think it's... Uh, <clears throat> well, I suppose anything can be acceptable in comedy if it's done in the right way, but yeah. it certainly does need to be taken a lot more seriously than it is. Yeah, well, the fact that the um, Peep Show dedicated the whole episode to the Mark character being raped by a woman, and it's supposed to be funny that it happened, it's supposed to be funny that he's treated as the bad guy. No sitcom, I mean, if a sitcom in the UK, a bit of Peep Show is a very popular, long-running sitcom in the UK, if a UK sitcom dedicated a half-hour episode to making jokes about a woman being raped, I think no matter how it was done, it would not ever be seen broadcast. Um, yeah. I would, I would imagine. Uh, another thing I saw on um, uh, the X Factor because uh, my dad watches it. They showed some clip from uh, of uh, this Asian woman named uh, Goldie, and she was chasing one of the judges around the around the floor because, um, yeah. to try to like, rub herself up against him or something. If that was the other way round, if that was a man chasing one of the female judges around, yeah, I mean, do you, do you, I'd give it. Two, three seconds before security pounced on him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, we we'll also say you talked about the legality of um, a domestic rape and um, um, and some and, and uh, things in the UN. Uh, it's not a violation of the man's rights under UK law. Um, yeah. It's it's not even called rape if it's a woman doing it to a man. She would only be charged with sexual sexual assault. assault yeah. Uh, um, and, you know, rape by uh, envelopment as well. Um, <clears throat> I mean, you know, I've been with I've been with some women who are considerably bigger than me. <laughs> and, uh, if I was lying down and they wanted to do that to me, they could certainly uh-huh. they could certainly do that. And, you know, the penis isn't this indestructible fucking weapon. Uh-huh. <laughs> so it's it can be quite easy to damage. I mean, uh-huh. I'm sure yeah. you. I'm sure you've stubbed it a few times, and it, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know, it does fucking hurt. You know, if someone is, and you know, that's without any form of violence. There, if someone was forcing themselves on you, you certainly could do plenty of damage. And of course, you know, no one would consider it a defence if uh, there's a man on char- on um, on trial for rape, and he says, um, "Oh well, you know, she got wet, so she obviously wanted it." It's an involuntary yeah. reaction, and mm. so is getting an erection. Yeah. Ah, okay. Uh, right, oh dear. Why are you a card-carrying member of the MRA? You don't seem like a misogynist. <laughs> well, maybe I'm just secretly a misogynist. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe. <laughs> is there anything else you want to add? To, uh, um... Yeah, uh, the MRA card, uh, that was, uh, I showed that in a video a while ago. Um, I've just got um, a laminator and a printer, and I want to play around with my new toy, so I thought it'd be funny to make an atheist and an MRA card. Oh, excellent, excellent. Um, Right. You've stated in at least one video that you are an MRA because you believe that men face more problems and issues in society than women, such as the high suicide rate, dying earlier, ignored when the victims of domestic violence 
uh, shafted in most divorce cases, etc. However, wouldn't you agree that no one is making laws against men, that all of these problems are the result of social bias, and that if men simply defied their gender roles and sought help, then the problems uh, would solve themselves? Hmm. Um, a few things to respond to there. Um, uh, yeah, for, uh, firstly, there are a lot of problems men face which are self-inflicted. Uh, you know, women certainly don't help us in that regard. Uh, you know, if a woman if a woman sees you crying, uh, well, if you're going out with a woman, she sees you crying. You you, know, you give it a few days, and she'll probably dump you. Uh, at least uh, from um, you know, from friends and stuff. Yeah. Um, there are laws which are biased against men. Uh, you know, for example, the rape laws which I which we just mentioned. Um, men also have <clears throat> basically no reproductive rights whatsoever. Um, you know, if a woman if a woman doesn't want to have a child then, uh, you know, she can tell the guy to wear a condom, she could uh, have, sh uh, she can take take the pill, she can take the morning after pill, she can have an abortion, or she can put the child up for adoption, failing all of those things. Uh, for a guy, um, condom splits, get a woman pregnant, you're basically, um, if you don't, if you don't want to have a kid, you're basically her bitch for the next 18 years. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And, yeah, that is, completely wrong we don't we don't force women to take uh, parental responsibility uh, against their will and men deserve the same right there right um, <clears throat> and yeah sure you know that some the Repu some of the republicans want to take away women's rights to abortion and that kind of thing and i'm completely uh, on the same side as the um, as the feminists who are against, who are against them, but you have they you know they have reproductive rights at the moment. Men don't. Yeah. And yeah, then there's also things like the draft as well, um, uh -huh. and a few other things which I can't think of off the top of my head. Um, in Switzerland, it's odd how we we always think of Switzerland because they were neutral in one war. We think of them as so. Uh, as a kind of pacifist nation. In Switzerland, every male over the age of 15 has to own a gun because, uh, well, it depends on the household, but I mean, if, if you have at least one male over the age of 15 in the house, the house has to have it, even if it's kept unloaded in a safe, because you're automatically a member of the reserve army the second you turn 15, but only if you're male. So the assumption of women aren't warlike, <coughs> men are warlike, is already there. You could be a pacifist, you could be against gun ownership, and you have to have one by the It's like, oh, you have a penis. Oh, you need a gun to go with that. <laughs> At uh, uh, 15, that's pretty shocking. Which country did you say that was again? Uh, Switzerland. Switzerland? Fuck. Yeah. Mm. That's, uh, yeah, I wouldn't have expected that from somewhere in Europe. Hmm. And, and yeah, I mean, as far as far as wars concerned, yeah, men are <laughs> men really are treated like shit. Uh, when uh, if a male is killed uh, as a civilian casual, um, if a male is killed, say in Iraq or somewhere like that, by the U.S. Army, you know, they're automatically counted as a combatant, whereas you know, women and children aren't. Yeah. Uh, well, yes, yeah, the, the Quran actually even has rules about non-combatants. Um, it, it, it's it's um, women and children you're, you're never supposed to kill unless, it, yes, you happen to kill them by accident in a, in a, mm. in a night raid. You can't deliberately kill women and children in a, in a war. Um, yeah. well, actually, this came up in discussion last night, um, talking about things um, uh, 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 well, which I've seen on stage quite a few times. And the two big... Um, really tearful moments, you can hear the audience, one of the things about theatre, you can hear the audience crying, are Gavroche's death on the barricade, but Gavroche is a child who's gone um, to fight in, in the revolution, um, and, and Eponine's death, and Eponine's one of those characters, you don't know the show, who dresses as a boy to fight in the front, which is quite interesting, in fact, the very fact that um, a male children could fight, according to that culture, but mm. fully, grown women, fully grown woman dress as a boy, you know, um, and it's sort of understandable the audience are going to cry at the sight of a child being shot dead. 
uh, um, Eponine also get hit, uh, um, big death moment. But the truth is, lots of people die in that play. It's about a war. Um, but most of them are young know, men. And um, instinctively, I actually even said, um, no matter how sexist it is, no matter how unfair on men or patronising to women, if I, if, that, if I were in the story of Les Mis and I had a choice between jumping in the bullet of, um, jump, uh, taking a bullet for one of the male characters and taking a bullet for Eponine, I would instinctively take the bullet uh, for Eponine. And my girlfriend said, yes, it's a natural evolutionary thing because women carry children, women tend <coughs> only to be able to carry one at a time. It's been an important, hard-wired evolutionary thing that we are more protective of women and, and, and a woman dying in a war seems... Uh, seems worse to us. Yeah, um, absolutely. I believe it's uh, it's an evolutionary thing for uh, male di- uh, male disposability and protecting uh, women. But uh, just because it's an evolutionary behaviour doesn't make it automatically uh, right. Just as uh, yeah, you know, we may find there's an evolutionary reason for racism or homophobia or murder or even rape that doesn't make any of those things any less horrific um so yeah i mean when it comes to protecting women you know like you said women are the ones who carry the children they're very limited in how many children they can have and the rate they can have them whereas men aren't and this makes women uh made, made women in the past more valuable than men uh, but um, of course you know, like I said that doesn't mean that that's uh, that we don't that this means we shouldn't have to challenge those behaviours uh, you know today th- uh, those behaviours don't <clears throat> um, you know are serve us a disadvantage uh, another example would be uh, our urge to eat uh, sweet and fatty food in the past, we wouldn't have found a duck roasting in its own juices. We oh. getting hold of fat and, and sugar was very, very difficult to do. So, oh. um, it, so getting those things was important. As today, they lead to obesity because we can just go down the shop and get a big pack of cakes and sit on our ass and go on the computer for fourteen hours straight. <laughs> um, so yeah, today when it comes to male disposability, uh, it's irrelevant because we now have uh, we now have various forms of contraception, and people aren't having dozens of children. Uh, you know, women maybe have say two children on average, and they're not spending uh, half their adult life uh, pregnant and unable to work. So. Being able, so eliminating the male disposability aspects and working towards uh, more equal roles is important. Hmm. Okay. Uh, one final question on ethics and politics. Uh, what are your thoughts on family values? Ooh, uh, how do you define family values in that question? I don't know. I can tell you that that question came from a Christian, if that has any bearing. It's, it's, it is quite vague, isn't it? Um, it is vague. Um, well, define family and uh, define values. I mean, I think it's important to have a family. You know, they're the only people which, you know, unless you do something absolutely horrific, they're the only people you can guarantee are going to be there for uh, there for you for your whole life, um, or until one of them dies. So, uh, having family is very important. I'm quite lax in that area. I should make more effort with my family. Um, but if you're talking about like the Family Value Commission or whatever the fuck it is in America, the big homophobic organisation, then obviously bastards. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, right. Well, now we're moving swiftly on. on the- the final category, which is just called general. Mm-hmm. Um, so, okay, I'll just shoot. Uh, is there anybody who is used to upload videos but left some time ago, as in left YouTube, uh, um, uh, and you uh, really, really miss them? Oh, um, I do miss Ghost Caster. Mm. 
Jay uh, did put up a video recently. I don't, I'm not sure if it's been uh, privated or anything or not yet. So no, I shouldn't say about that in case it has. But right. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, I miss Ghost Casper. Um, I'm sure there's loads which I've just kind of forgotten about. But yeah, which I'll find we'll find just uh, YouTube aside recently. Yeah. Uh, and. Uh, yeah, some people just stop making videos, and some people do decide for whatever reason. And mm-hmm. um, but uh, no, so Skull Casper would be one that you really, really wish would come back and make more videos. Yeah, um, John Paul Prime isn't he the one who thought that violence against men uh, is less important than violence against women because uh, when women slap you, it doesn't do very much damage. Oh, did he say that? Um, I, I've heard a few criticisms of him. I don't think I ever actually saw a video of him where he was talking on those issues. Um, but then he hasn't made videos for quite some time. Um, yeah. yeah. I think he's been criticised for quite a few things that he... I mean, it might not have been him, so I'm not going to oh. say certain that it was. Okay. I think it was, but I could be wrong. Um, if it was him... Um, uh, John the Other did an excellent response to uh, the video... Um, where you know he he said, well, you know, I think violence against men is ju- is just as is just as bad. But since you think women are so weak that it doesn't hurt if they slap you, then uh, I've got an idea. Why don't we do a fundraiser? We can get women to queue up and pay a dollar to slap you and put all that money towards uh, women's shelters. <laughs> no <Right>. response. <laughs> Um, actually, well, that might be the only thing that I ever heard of, of John the Other saying that was intelligent. I, I don't like John the Other. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, I've never had any. Uh, I mean, I've had minor disagreements with him. I haven't had any. Uh, haven't had anything which really made me think, "What the fuck?" Hmm. Um, I'm trying to think what he said or did that I did like, but it might have been so long ago that it, I don't really care. <laughs> mm. Um, so it's an interview. I'm not meant to be expressing opinions. Um, yeah, you're not an uh, opinions interviewer. <laughs> um, uh, is there a topic you wish moderates to cover? Um, I'll explain this question again. Came from a Christian, so I assume they mean moderates. Like, what should the moderate Christians be talking about? <laughs> moderate Christians. Hmm. I suppose just. I suppose they should be more uh, working more against the ex- uh, against the extremists. I know a few of them do, but I, there's a lot of the moderates, um, and this goes for you know not just Christians, but um, you know feminists and MRAs and all sorts of other um, all sorts of other groups. Um, but yeah, I mean the moderates should be more doing more to distance themselves from the extremists rather than pretending that they don't exist or that they're such an extreme minority that it doesn't even matter. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree. Uh, what's your favourite song? Favourite song? Um, really, really does depend on my mood. Um, I- I'll actually help you out here because it actually has S in brackets, but I wasn't quite sure how to phrase that. So what, what, what's your favourite song or your favourite songs? So you can have a few if it's different. <clears throat> Yeah. Um, ooh, I'm struggling to think of favourite songs at the moment, but I do like rock and metal, uh, Black Sabbath, uh, Led Zeppelin, Pink Floyd. Um, I like quite a lot of comedy songs as well. Do you know a guy called uh, John Le Jose on YouTube? Uh, no, I don't think I do. Yeah, he's got some fantastic uh, comedy songs. I uh, highly recommend you check him out. Hmm. Okay, okay, that's a recommendation. Then maybe, maybe we can. Uh, I'll link. You send me a link later. I'll link him in the description of this video. Mhm. Um, ah, here's an excellent question. What do you think of Alex's book so far? Um. Yeah. So far, I uh, really enjoyed it, especially when they got to. Uh, oh, I can't really give anything away, can I? Uh, we, we can give a few spoilers because you're only thirty-two yeah. pages in, aren't you? <laughs> I am. Yeah. Uh, when they got. Uh, all of the stuff about the Institute was uh, was just brilliant. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so, well, well, I, don't know, I, I can't give anything away. 
Oh, you don't, oh, Canary, oh, right, yes. I think a few people have remarked on that part. <laughs> um, I had a particular person in mind. Do you know Annie from Being Human? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's the actress I was visualising. Hmm. You just, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> I, got, I don't say any more in case I give it away. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but anybody who's reading the beginning of the book or has read the book, well, that, that'll mean something to them. Um, so, yes, yeah, um, uh, what opinions of yours have changed the most since you came to YouTube? That is quite a hard one, isn't it? That is a hard one. Um, I've changed lots of opinions, but I'm, again, struggling to think of anything at the moment um, being put on the spot quite heavily. Hmm. Yeah, I think I've, um, I've, I've began to, I've certainly began to see people more uh, more as individuals you know I've, uh, I'm, I like the moderate Christians more uh, I despise the fundamental but at the same time I despise the fundamentalists even more um, there's some of the moderate feminists who I do really like and don't have any problem with whatsoever. But my disdain for the radicals has uh, <laughs> grown beyond belief. So, um, you know, rather than just looking and thinking, Christian, idiot, feminist, idiot, <laughs> I, <laughs> see them more as, I see them uh, more individually and I want to know more about um, the specifics of yeah. what I believe. Yeah, I would actually agree in the context of the big debate, actually, which I sort of. I've almost given up on the big debate has become a question of people becoming friends or people becoming enemies regardless of any supposed mm. divide between the yeah. and yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I mean yeah, basically I think I've certainly become a lot more open minded uh towards uh new ideas. Um I mean, yeah, I'm not, I'm not open-minded towards Christi <laughs> Christianity. You know, I've gone into it enough to know that it's complete bullshit. Uh, but, you know, more willing to view uh, what they believe as um, individual beliefs rather, um, rather than part of one homogenous group. So, yeah. Okay. Um, if you suddenly found yourself turned into a woman... How would you spend your day? Oh, good question. Mm. Um, of course, first thing I'd do is masturbate. Just you, just you, just would. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, like to have multiple orgasms. I suppose uh, being in uh, the MRM, um, I'd like to see how different I am treated by society as a woman. Yeah. Yeah. Um, get and um, you know be able to understand that a bit better. Mm. Um, <clears throat> I mean, does it have? I suppose it would affect my hormones and things as well, wouldn't it? Being a woman. Yeah. Well, the, so, the question kind of implies you're a woman for a day, but if that was the day that was the wrong, that was in the wrong time of the month, that'd be fucking unlucky, wouldn't it? I mean, you know, regardless, I'm going to have uh, I'm going to have eight times less testosterone, I suppose, and. Uh, more estrogen and those kind of things, and they are going to have a psychological effect. So it would be interesting to see whether I thought differently and how um, how that influenced my uh, um, influenced my ability to uh, perform at different tasks and that kind of thing. So, uh, so uh, that would be quite interesting from. A sort of scientific perspective, although there could be a placebo element to that as well. Yeah, I think you kind of took the word to one else. When I read that question, I immediately thought, yeah, try every sex toy uh, um, and go with as many men and women as possible. It would be our only ever chance to have lesbian sex because you'd have to be a woman first. Yeah, but you'd, um, have to, you'd have to have lesbian sex, wouldn't you? Yes, definitely. But, but yeah, also... The brainy stuff about how society treats you as well, obviously, if you, if you have time with all the shagging and masturbation going on. Um, but anyway, so, final question. Um, if you could interview any small YouTube uploader, let's say, two or three figures, and any large YouTube uploader, let's say, four figures and upwards, which would they be? Hmm. Okay, so four figures and upwards. 
I'm going to say Darren Brown just because it would be awesome to actually meet him and uh, have a chat with him. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so, yeah, uh, Darren Brown for the big channel. For oh. the small channel, that's quite... That is a bit tougher, but uh, since I can't think of anything else at the moment, I'm going to say Warren Farrell. He's He is quite famous, but... Uh, Mainly outside YouTube. On YouTube, he is still a small channel, so he counts. Oh, okay. Well, we'll link both of those in the description. If they ever hear this, maybe you'll get your chance. Mm. So, yes. Hmm. Well, thank you very much for a wonderful interview. And um, as we've said um, at the top of this interview, we'll be having a regular kind of discussion, um, seeing probably starting at the end of this year. Um, and um, so you'll be hearing from both of us again shortly but for now, bye Pleasure as always Alex and everybody else I shall see you soon, bye